So the central limit theorem when we're looking at means. It's slightly different than the central limit theorem when we're looking at proportions, aka percentages. And they're almost the same. The big difference for the central limit theorem versus the central limit theorem when you're looking at percentages is they both need to be random and they both need sample sizes um, or they both need populations that are at least 10 times bigger than the sample sizes. The big difference is the actual size of our sample. Now, if you're looking at means, we just need our sample to be bigger than 30, then we're good to go. Whereas when we're looking at percentages, we needed at least 10 successes and 10 failures. Okay, we can't have 10 successes and 10 failures when we're looking at averages because we're just looking at a number. We're not putting people into two groups. All right, and then for our warm up, we think that second year college students study more on average than first year college students. So, what we do is that we look at first year college students and we see that on average they study 8.3 hours a week with a standard deviation of 3.7. And we look at 50 of them. And then for second year students, they study on average 8.7 hours per week and have a standard deviation of 3.8. And we also have 50 of those. So again, go ahead and get those written down and give me a little thumbs up when you're done. Thanks, Ashley. Thanks, Maddie. So we're letting our significance level be 0 0.05. We want to come up with our null null turn of hypothesis and then use technology to find the p-value. So I'll go ahead and put you guys into groups now so that you can work on the... We haven't gone over this kind of problem yet, but I just wanted to see if you guys could um, use what you've already learned and figure it out. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you guys again. And let's see how we did. So for the null hypothesis, we're always going to assume that these two populations are the same. So we're going to assume that first year students are going to have the same average of study time as second year students. Now, our alternative hypothesis is that we think that second year students study more than first year students. So. We should have that as our alternative hypothesis. Now, from unit six, when we we're looking at um, hypothesis tests with proportions, we learned that sometimes they rewrite these so that you're actually looking at the difference. So if we subtract mu2 from both sides of this, we'll have mu1 minus mu2 equals zero. And same thing here, if we subtract mu2 from both sides on this one, we'll have mu1 minus mu2. And of course, mu2 minus itself is just going to give us zero. So these are the same ways of writing the null and alternative hypothesis. It just depends on what kind of technology you're using, which way you're going to see it. All right, so that's it for the first one. For the second part, it wants us to find the p-value and decide if we reject h naught. So if we go to unit seven and you go down to that technology bit that's gonna be right above your actual assignment, you're going to see the hypothesis testing website. So if we click on that, it's gonna take you to this website. Now we already have to change a couple things because right now it's on single proportion. That means when we're looking at one sample with percentages. What we want to do is that we want to look at means. We're actually looking at the difference in means. 
So remember, difference in means means that you're looking at two means, not just one. So when we click on that difference of means, we're going to enter all the information that we got. So for our first sample, sample one, that would be the first year students at college. They're going to have a sample mean of 8.3 with a standard deviation of 3.7. And our sample size was 50. So that's our mu one, aka our sample one. We're going to do the same thing for sample two. So sample two had a average of 8.7 with a standard deviation of 3.8 and a sample size of 50. All right, lastly, we're on the test setup part. So it says that the difference in mu1 and mu2 is zero. So what that lines up with is our null hypothesis right here. So it says, that, oh, the difference, aka the subtraction between mu1 and mu2 is zero. So we're always going to leave it at zero. We're not going to change it. And then for our alternative hypothesis, we think that mu1 minus mu2 is going to be less than that zero or less than that difference. We need to make sure that we choose that third one. Lastly, before we hit calculate, we want to make sure our significance level is at 5%, aka 0 0.05, which it is, so we are good to go. So we're going to go ahead and hit calculate. And what we are going to end up getting is we're going to end up getting a t4 of negative 0 0.53. And we're also going to get a p-value that is the probability of 29.75%. So what that means, I'm just going to go ahead and write those numbers down. So t equals negative 0 0.53. And our p-value is 29.75%. So our p-value is 29.75%, which is actually bigger than our alpha, which is 5%. Remember, if you prefer to write those in decimal places, you just have to move the decimal two spots to the left. So this is the same thing as 0.2975, and this is the same thing as 0 0.05. So if you remember that little rhyme that we talked about before, if P is low, reject HO. Since our P value is not low, it's actually bigger than our significance level, then we fail to reject H naught. So what we would say is we failed to find significant evidence to reject H naught. <clears throat> so we failed to find significant evidence to reject H naught. Now, if you wanted to write it in terms of our alternative hypothesis, another way that you could put this, and both are totally right, it's just a different way of saying the same thing, is we failed to find significant evidence to support our alternative hypothesis. So they both mean the same thing 
It's just typically when we're going to summarize our significance level and our p-value, we're usually going to be talking about it in terms of the null hypothesis. So kind of like keeping with that court of law example, um, like we have been <clears throat> the last couple of weeks, we would say we failed to find significant evidence to say that this person is um, guilty. Okay. All right. So before we move on, does anybody have any questions about this example? All right, how did you guys do on setting it up on your own? Did you do pretty good on the null and alternative hypothesis or did you feel a little fuzzy on it? What do you think, Maddie? Um, I think we did okay once um, we realized to use the right calculator. <laughs> once you got the right calculator. Good, Evan, how did you guys feel about it? What about Chris? I know Chris is in Evan's group. How did you feel about it? I definitely struggled a little bit, but I think I'm understanding it better now. Okay, good. Yeah, always seeing an example played out is, is super helpful. You're like, well, I was thinking about going that way, but I wasn't exactly sure. All right, so let's go ahead and, oh. Professor, I, I did have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, for the, oh, I, I just thought of it, for the um, null hypothesis and the alter, alternative hypothesis, mm -hmm. um, when we wrote uh, mu1 minus mu2 equals zero mm -hmm. under the null hypothesis, um, could you just go over that again, like why that is? Yeah, so <clears throat> our null hypothesis is always going to be that mu1 equals mu2. Right, we're always going to assume that these two populations or these two samples aren't different until we get overwhelming evidence to show otherwise. So sometimes the way this is written, depending on what software you're using, what book you're looking at, <clears throat> instead of saying that they're equal, they'll subtract mu2 from both sides. Oh, okay. Yeah. And instead, they'll say, oh, the difference between these two guys is zero. OK, so they'll always be equal unless proven otherwise. Right. OK. And then they do the same thing for our alternative. So our alternative is that this one was less. So they subtract mu2 from both sides, like so. And then we're like mu1 minus mu2. And then. If you subtract something from itself, you're going to get zero. OK, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for asking. All right, very good. So let's do just another example um, working with two means to make sure that we really feel good about setting up the alternative hypothesis. <clears throat> so another example. We want to know if there is a difference in the number of tickets. Teenagers get versus senior citizens. <clears throat> so what we do is that
we interview some teenagers. We also interview some seniors and here's what we find. We found that teenagers on average have 1.2 tickets. with a standard deviation of 0 0.4. And we interviewed 37 teenagers. For seniors, we found that they had an average amount of tickets of 1.7 with a standard deviation of 1.1. And we interviewed 40 students. All right, so what I would like you guys to do is I would like you to determine what your null and alternative hypothesis is. I would like you to find your p-value. And I would like you to tell me if we reject or fail to reject H naught. So again, once you're done writing this problem down, go ahead and give me some indicator and I'll put you in groups so you can help each other out. Got it. Awesome. Three, I'm gonna put you guys in those breakout rooms. Remember to use that technology. Okay, and remember I'll be like sneaking in there and seeing how you guys are doing in a couple minutes. Okay, so go ahead.
Hi. Hi, kids. How's it going? Um, pretty good. We're just writing our interpretation right now. Oh, amazing. All right, I'm gonna go check in on the guys and see how they're doing, okay? Okay. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Hey, gentlemen, how's it going? It's going okay. Right now, I'm having a little trouble finding the p-value. Same. Um, so did you enter it into the website? I have not. All right. So once you enter it in the website, you'll be able to find the p-value and you'll be good to go. So Awesome. I'll, Thank you. You're welcome. I'll give you guys a couple more minutes, and then um, we'll come back together, okay? Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what we got. So, Evan, are you with us or did you run and go get some orange juice? I am with you, but I'm still partially figuring everything out. That's okay. Did you get um, your null and alternative hypothesis? Um, would the um, null hypothesis be, oh God, what would, would it be that, Oh God, sorry, there's a, there's an alert right now. Oh, what's the alert? That. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So first let's say that mu one is teenagers and mu two is seniors. So our null hypothesis is always gonna be that these two are equal. Which another way to say that is that if you subtract them, their difference is gonna be zero. All right, Ashley, can you tell me what your alternative hypothesis was? Yeah, so we said that mu one is not equal to mu two. Perfect, <clears throat> so that is wonderful, thank you that we said that they're just not equal is because at the beginning, we just said that there's a difference. We don't know if one is gonna be bigger than the other one. So we just think that they're gonna be not equal or different. And again, if you subtract mu two from both sides, you're gonna have mu one minus mu two does not equal zero. So mu two minus mu two would be zero. Great, nice job. So now that we have our null, our turn of hypothesis, and then these neat summary statistics for each of our samples, we can go to that website and figure out our p-value. So again, you're going to go to that website. You're going to make sure that you're on difference of mean. And we're going to enter in our data. So for this first sample, we have an average of 1.2 with a sample of 0 0.4. And the sample size for that one was 37. For our second sample, we had an average of 1.7. Our standard deviation was 1.1. And our sample size was 50. Or no, it was 40. My apologies. Okay, we're always going to leave this value at zero. So we're assuming that the difference between these two is zero. <clears throat> and we just think that they're not equal. So we're going to keep that alternative hypothesis, that very first one. Remember, if the significance level isn't stated, then we're just going to assume that that significance level is 5%. So we're going to go ahead and hit calculate. And what we get is a t-score of negative 2.69, and our p-value is 0 0.97. So 0.97% for 0 0.0097. All right, so now that we have our p-value, <clears throat> That means that we are ready to reject slash fail to reject H naught. So again, remember that cute little rhyme, if P is low, reject H O. 
so since our p-value of 0 0.0097 is less than our significance level of 0 0.05, that means that we would reject H naught. So since we're rejecting H naught, that means that we have found evidence of what? So Maddie, I'm gonna pick on you for just a second. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so did we find evidence saying that teenagers and seniors have the same average or did we find evidence showing that teenagers and seniors have different averages? Um, we wanna reject the first one that says that they're um, equal to each other. Right, good. So since we reject this first one, that means that we found evidence to support that they are different, which makes sense because the older you are, the more time you've had to rack up those um, tickets, whether it's for speeding, um, distracted driving, road rage, what have you. Good, awesome. So before we move on, does anybody have any questions? Looking good. All right, cool. So before we go today, I just wanna give you guys a couple of quick reminders. The first reminder is that you have your homework due tonight for unit six. So make sure that you guys get that in by midnight tonight so you don't get any um, late deductions on that. The other thing is that tomorrow is Veterans Day, so it's a holiday, so we will not be meeting. However, we will have class on Friday. So Friday from 8 to 8.50, that's just gonna be our typical Friday study day. So if you wanna come, sit in, work on your homework with your mic and your camera off, ask me questions when they pop up while you're looking at unit seven homework, you are more than welcome. I will be logging in from Oregon on Friday. So if I have any technical difficulties, I'll be sure to send you guys a message on Canvas and make you aware. But Everything should work out just fine. Okay. Awesome. So that is it. You guys go enjoy the rest of your day. Shoot me an email if you have any questions. Okay. And I will see you on Friday. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome.